Welcome to the video solutions for the AQA Functional Skills English Level 2 Writing Paper for January 2022. In this video, we will go through the questions and you can get a better idea of what you want your answers to look like, as well as what to look out for when planning your answers. Before we take a look at the questions, let's have a look at the criteria that you'll be marked on so that you understand what you are being assessed on. So you need to craft a fit for purpose response with an appropriate level of development to engage the reader and using appropriate register. So that means that your response needs to be engaging. It needs to draw the reader in and it needs to have an appropriate level of development. So you need to be including details and developing your ideas by explaining them with reasons or adding additional information. It has to be fit for purpose, so you have to consider the purpose that you've been asked to write for and adapt your response to the question. You also need to use an appropriate register or tone, so you need to adapt what you're writing to the audience. If you're writing for a professional audience, you'll want to use a formal tone and register, and if you're writing for, say, a friend, you would want to use an informal tone and register. You want to use appropriate formatting and make sure that your answer is the right length. So you'll often be given a word count and you need to try and stay within that. And you also need to include appropriate formatting features based on the text type. So for example, if you're writing an article, you'll need to include a heading, perhaps use subheadings and include paragraphs. You need to use a range of simple and complex words and phrases correctly. So vary the sentence structures that you're using and use a range of words and phrases. Use a variety of sentence structures, including complex sentences, correctly. So again, making sure that both your word choices and your sentence structures are varied throughout the text. Use some longer sentences and shorter sentences. Use longer words and shorter words. And make sure that any words that you're using are suitable for the task. You want to provide a clear and logical sequencing of points in your text. So think before you start writing your answer how you're going to order the points you want to make in a logical way. And you need to include an appropriate level of detail for the purpose. So read the question carefully and think about appropriate details that you can include in the answer. We also need to consider spelling, punctuation and grammar. So make sure that your spelling is correct and can convey your meaning effectively. Try to use specialist words in your answers as well that are adapted to the specific purpose of the text. You also need to demarcate your sentences correctly. So that means that you're using capital letters at the start of each sentence and full stops at the end. And you need to be using a range of other punctuation correctly. So for example, you want to be using commas and apostrophes accurately. You need to use these markers to ensure smooth and efficient reading. To so make sure that your punctuation is helping the reader um, rather than hindering them when they're reading. So helping to make your meaning really clear. You need to make sure that you have few grammatical errors. So all of your writing needs to make sense. You also need to use modality devices appropriately. So modality devices um, include modal verbs like might, could, will, or should. So make sure that you are doing that correctly and make sure that you have some subject verb agreement within your answers. So, um, for example, you would say I think, but you would say he or she thinks. So you need to make sure that you're changing verbs depending on the subject that you're using. So make sure that your spelling, punctuation and grammar are accurate as well as having a good composition for your text. Question one. Your local council has recently distributed this leaflet. 
They're our open spaces and our leisure places, our lungs and our heart. Local parks are for everybody. Let's keep it that way. And we need to know if people are disrespecting these wonderful spaces. If there's anything you want to tell us, contact us at parks at bramby.com. You want to report some incidents in your local park that you thought were unacceptable. Send your report to parks at bramby.com. Your report should be approximately 150 to 200 words in total. You should plan your answer, use correct spelling, punctuation and grammar, and write clearly and effectively. So let's take a look at the question and see what it's asking us to do. The first thing we need to identify is the text type that we're being asked to write. And we are being told that we need to write a report. So when we're writing reports, we generally um, give a list of sort of facts about incidents and then we come to some conclusions and maybe make some recommendations and suggestions. We also need to know about the audience. So the audience here would be parks at Bramby.com. So we are writing for the people that manage the parks who might be able to do something about the problems, the incidents that have happened. The topic that we're talking about is incidents in our local park. So we need to remain focused on that topic throughout the answer. So overall, we've got the audience, the purpose and the text type. We need to be writing about incidents in the local park. Um, we need to write this in the form of a report and we need to write to the managers of the parks. So you should come up with a plan. So make sure to plan your answer in the space provided so that you've got lots of ideas before you start writing and you'll be able to structure your answer effectively. So let's take a look at a model answer to this question. Report on disturbances in Bramby Community Park. Dear sir or madam, over the past week, there have been several incidents in Bramby Community Park that need to be addressed alcohol and noise disturbances. Despite signs on the park gates strictly forbidding the consumption of alcohol in the park, underage people have been seen drinking alcohol in the park every day this week. Often the drinking is accompanied by loud music. This is irritating to the local residents and intimidating to children who would like to play in the playground. Littering. Underage drinkers often leave cans and bottles lying on the grass. In addition to it being incredibly unsightly and un unhygienic, this could cause injury to any wildlife in the park, as well as the young children who play there. Conclusions and suggestions. Recently, behavior in the park has been unacceptable. The consumption of alcohol, loud music and littering are making the park an unpleasant environment for almost everybody. I suggest that increased policing in the area would reduce underage drinking and noise pollution. Additionally, a larger number of waste bins and increased waste collection in the park could reduce littering. Yours faithfully, Ophelia Oppenheimer. So now let's consider the reasons why this is a good answer and would gain high marks in the exam. We'll start by looking at punctuation. So each of your sentences will need to begin with a capital letter and end with a full stop. You can also use exclamation marks or question marks at the end of sentences if you will need to ask a question or if you want to add some sort of emphasis and emotion to your text. We've also got commas that have been used throughout the answer to separate out different clauses. So different parts of the sentence have been separated. For example, we've got despite signs on the park gates, strictly forbidding the consumption of alcohol in the park. And then we've got a comma there um, where the reader would take a breath. And then underage people have often been seen drinking alcohol in the park. So we've got commas used throughout the answer to separate out different clauses and to add additional information. So we've got an example of a comma used to add additional information here. This is irritating to local residents and intimidating to children who would like to play in the playground. So we've just added a little bit of additional information about the children using that comma there. 
You could try to use a larger range of punctuation in your answer. This answer doesn't particularly use many different types of punctuation. So you could use things like dashes or parentheses, but you need to ensure that all of your capital letters, full stops and commas are being used accurately throughout your answer. Next, let's consider grammar and spelling. So when you're writing your answer, all of your sentences will need to be accurate and make sense on their own. The grammar in this answer is really strong because all of the nouns and verbs match up so everything makes sense. We've also got the correct use of um, singular words and plural words. So for example, it says that there have been several incidents that need to be addressed. Now, if we were talking about a single incident, we would say there has been rather than there have been. There has been an incident that needs to be addressed. So you need to change the verbs in your sentence depending on whether the noun is singular or plural. We've also got some really great examples of difficult words that have been spelled correctly in this answer. So for example, we've got unsightly and unhygienic. We have intimidating and we have accompanied. So you should try to use a few longer, more sort of sophisticated words in your answer, but make sure that all of the basics are right. So you want to make sure that you're spelling simple words like on, the, um, and to correctly. Be careful with to. Um, often people get confused between the single letter to and the double letter to. So make sure that you are revising basic spellings and making sure that you can spell everything correctly. Often the best way to do this is just to practice, practice, practice with your spelling and try to read as much as possible because reading will really help you um, to familiarise yourself with the spelling of common words. Accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar will help you to make sure that your answer is clear and all of your writing makes sense. You should also try to read your answers out loud or read them in your head to make sure that everything makes sense to you. And when you're doing practice answers, it's always a good idea to share them with a friend and ask if everything is clear to them and makes sense. Your answers will also have to include appropriate details and be an appropriate length. So often you will be given a word count for your answers. And here we've been told to write 150 to 200 words in total. This answer conforms to that word count and you need to make sure that your answers are doing that too. The more that you practice and count the number of words that you've been writing, the more familiar you will get with what 150 words or 200 words looks like on the page. You need to also make sure that you're including a relevant range of details. So read through the question really carefully and look at what details you've been asked to include. So we have been told that we need to report some incidents in the local park that were unacceptable. So we need to give some negative opinions about these incidents and we need to um, explain that they are unacceptable in the community. We've definitely got evidence of this in this answer. So we've given some details about the incidents and then we have given some suggestions about what can be done to address them. We focused on the topic of disturbances in Bramby Community Park throughout the answer. And this is an appropriately detailed response because they've explained what has happened. So for example, underage people have been drinking and they've explained why this is negative, why this is bad for the community, because it is irritating to local residents and intimidating to children. If you're ever struggling to add detail, then go back to your plan 
and see if you can come up with any more ideas that you can fit into your answer in a logical order. You can also try to explain your ideas with reasons. So for example here, um, we've got, in addition to being incredibly unsightly and unhygienic, this could cause injury to wildlife in the park. So not just saying what has happened, but then giving an explanation. These details will help you to gain higher marks in your answer, so long as they are closely related to the question and the topic that you need to be writing about. You will also need to consider how your writing is formatted and organised. So when you look at the question, you need to identify the text type. And we know that here we need to be writing a report. And we're writing it um, to an email address. So we also need to be structuring this report as an email. So we've got um, this template to help us out here. So we've been told who we need to address our email to, so we need to pop the email address in the top there. And then we'll also need a subject line. So a subject line is needed in every email and it just gives a brief summary of what the email will be about in a few words. We then need a polite greeting. That's really important for an email. And because we're writing a report, this person has decided to include a title as well because you will need a title for a report. We've then got a few subheadings that are really useful in reports to break up different sections and different bits of information. And then finally, we have a sign off and we have the name of the sender. We've used yours faithfully here because we don't know the name of the person we're writing to. So we've put dear sir, madam, and we use yours faithfully whenever we don't know their name. If we did know their name, then we would use yours sincerely. So make sure that you are using all of the organisational features, all of the formatting that is appropriate for the text type you're writing for. Familiarise yourself with all the different text types that might come up in the exam, and then you will be able to apply these in your own answers. Your answers will also need to be cohesive. Now this essentially means that you are linking ideas together and joining everything up so that the answer flows effectively. So within the same paragraph, all sentences should be referring to the same topic and the sentences should flow on from one another. So for example, we have despite signs on the park gates, strictly forbidding the consumption of alcohol in the park, underage people have been seen drinking alcohol in the park every day this week. So in the next sentence, we are returning to this topic of drinking, so drinking alcohol. Um, so we've linked the two sentences together because they're about the same thing. And then we've said often this drinking is accompanied by loud music. And then we've talked about the effect of this loud music in the next sentence. This is irritating to the local residents and intimidating to children. So try to link your sentences together and make sure that everything flows on from one another in a logical way. Paragraphs will also help you to do this. So using paragraphs is really, really important in your answer to break up different parts of information so that it's easier for the reader to understand. Paragraphs have been used in a really logical order in this answer. So we've got the first paragraph, which introduces what the report will be about the incidents in the park. We've got the second paragraph explaining alcohol and noise problems. And then the third paragraph follows on from this really well um, to say that these alcohol problems have been linked to littering because it's underage drinkers that are leaving litter in the park. And then we move on to conclusions and suggestions. So this paragraph summarises what has been said in the rest of the answer and then makes some suggestions to resolve these problems. So overall, this is a really logical structure that will help the reader to understand um, what is happening and how it can be resolved. There's also um, a few connective words and punctuation that has been used to make sentences and paragraphs more cohesive. So to join ideas up together. So for example, 
in this paragraph here, we ha have started the paragraph with the word despite. So this shows that we are going to um, create a contrast. So despite signs on the park gates, um, these people have been drinking alcohol. And then in this paragraph here, we've got in addition to. So this connective phrase um, helps to add some information. So in addition to being incredibly unsightly and unhygienic, and then we've got a comma to add the additional information here. This could cause injury to wildlife in the park and to young children. So try to use some connective words in your answers to link different ideas together, add information and create a contrast. Your answer will need to also be adapted to the audience and purpose. So you need to use appropriate language and register to create the right kind of tone and style for the audience. The audience for this question is the local council. So we need to be quite formal and polite and professional. So we have the use of standard English throughout the answer and the writing is very formal. We don't have any sort of contractions such as can't, don't or won't, which would make the answer a little bit less formal. We don't have any exclamation marks and we don't have any slang words that would be used in informal writing. The focus is on the local community throughout. So we're talking about Ramby Community Park. Um, we've identified one park and we've talked about the issues. Now this suits the purpose that we were given in the question. So we need to report incidents in our local park. And we've definitely done that in this answer, throughout the answer. We haven't veered off and talked about anything else. So overall, it's really well suited to the purpose and audience. Now we've already considered how using commas and using connective words can help you to link your ideas together. You need to show the examiner that you can link multiple ideas together in your answers by writing longer sentences that join up information. So for example, we have the consumption of alcohol, loud music and littering and making the park an unpleasant environment for almost everybody. So in this sentence, we have identified the issues and we've listed those using commas. And then we have explained that it makes the park unpleasant. And then it explains that this is an issue that affects almost everybody. So we've linked together a few different ideas in the same sentence there, in a slightly longer sentence. Make sure that you're not just using short simple sentences in your answers because you really need to show that you can draw your ideas together. So we've seen that this answer is really effective for a number of reasons. Not only is it formatted correctly using organisational features and formatting features that are appropriate for an email and a report, but it is also really well adapted to the audience and purpose that have been specified in the question. Spelling, punctuation and grammar are accurate throughout the answer and this helps it to make sense and flow effectively. The focus is on the question throughout and they haven't talked about anything else. So the writing is really great overall and you should try to replicate this sort of answer in your exam. Why not have a go at writing your own answer to this question using this one for inspiration? Now let's consider the second question. You have found the following while browsing the internet. Work, love it or hate it. We're looking for articles about work for our regular World of Work column here in brambyville.co.uk. Tell us a time when you were involved in doing some work. Tell us what you did, who you worked with and how you felt. Was it worth all the bother? It doesn't have to be a paid job or work experience. It can be any time you have put some work in. Housework, gardening, decorating, 
care work, creative work, studying, anything at all. Upload articles at brambyville.co.uk. P.S. We're offering free online courses to the writers of the best articles. And our task is to write an article about work to upload to brambyville.co.uk. So the first thing we need to know is the text type. And we know that we need to write an article. So already we know about the organisational features and the formatting that we'll need to have there. We also need to consider the audience. So who is the audience? Well, we're writing for a world of work column. So chances are we're going to have people that are interested in work and employment on that website there. We also need to consider the purpose. So we've been told that we need to write about a time when we were involved in doing some work. And then we need to explain what we did, who we worked with, and how we felt. So there's various parts of the question there that we need to address and lots of different details that we could include in our plan. And then it says that it can be any time that we put some work in, so it could be almost anything to do with work at all. So make sure that you plan your answer and come up with lots of creative ideas and then decide how you are going to structure your answer in a logical way before you get started. Now let's take a look at a model answer so that you can see what you need to do. Is it really work if you love doing it? Last week I sat myself down with a cup of tea and started to work on a new painting. Like many artists, I soon found myself sucked into a sensation of utter focus. With an audiobook playing in the background, I spent hour upon hour with a paintbrush in my hand, letting the colour spill onto the canvas and turning my imagined ideas into a concrete image. After eight uninterrupted hours of sitting alone and letting the paintbrush dance, I awoke from my creative stupor and admired my creation. It was not my best work, but it was still satisfying to see the fruits of my labour. When I hung the new painting alongside its many brothers and sisters, I was overjoyed. Creating it did not feel like work at all. It felt like bringing a small piece of my heart and mind to life. By Samantha Hales, 23rd of the 6th, 2023. So just like in the first question, we're going to go through this answer and examine each of the marking criteria. So let's start by looking at the punctuation. Like we said before, every single sentence needs to start with a capital letter and end with a full stop. And we've definitely got that in this article here. We've also got commas used throughout the answer to add further detail to sentences. So we've got with an audiobook playing in the background, comma, I spent hour upon hour with a paintbrush in my hand, comma, letting the colour spill onto the canvas and turning my imagined ideas into a concrete image. So different parts of the sentence have been separated with commas to give a bit of breathing space and to separate things out so it's easier to read. You could try to use a larger range of punctuation and we've got, for example, a question mark here in the title because we've asked a question, is it really work if you love doing it? We also have a semicolon in the final paragraph here that joins two connected um, sentences together. So you should try to be ambitious with your punctuation, um, but if you don't know how to use certain pieces of punctuation, for example, semicolons, then you can try and avoid using those. Make sure that you know how to use capital letters, full stops and commas, these are the most important things that you need to consider overall. The grammar in this answer is also very strong. We know this because we have read through and everything makes sense. All of the nouns and verbs match up together. So make sure that you read through your answer to make sure that all of it makes sense. The spelling is also correct throughout the answer and we've got some more difficult to spell words that have been included. So for example, we've got stupor, admired, and satisfying. 
As before, make sure that you are spelling simple words correctly, and if you can, try to add some more complicated words that you know how to spell. If you're not sure how to spell a word, then make sure that you're not including it because you could lose marks if you spell it wrong. Instead, think of another simpler word that you could try to use that has the same meaning. Your answers also need to include appropriate details and be an appropriate length. So let's take a look and see if we have a word count for this question. Nope, we haven't got a word count mentioned here, so what do we do? Well, we need to consider um, the level of detail that will be required. So in the question, we were asked various things. So for example, we were told to tell us what you did and then tell us who you worked with and how it felt. So, so long as you are covering those things in your answer, then it should be detailed and long enough. Here we have three paragraphs. So try to write between about three to five paragraphs in your answers whenever you don't have a word count that's been given. And we have lots of details um, that are relevant to the question that have been included. So we've got an explanation of the work that was done. So they sat down and they focused on painting. And they said who they did it with. They said that they did it alone, which was another question um, that was proposed in the task. And then we have an explanation of how they felt about the work. So they were overjoyed about it and they said that it felt like bringing a small piece of their heart and mind to life. So they have fully answered all of the different parts of the question in the answer. If you're struggling to add details, then try to add some explanation, some reasons, um, or some sort of opinions and emotions into your answer. Make sure that you go back to your plan and you look for any ideas that you might have missed off in your answer if you're really struggling for words. Next, let's think about the formatting. So, as we said before, you need to really think about the text type when you're deciding what format your answer should be in. So we know that we need to write an article and there are some key features that articles generally include. So we generally have a title in an article and we have one here. Articles sometimes also have subheadings. We haven't got any here because it's quite a short answer, but if you were writing um, a couple more paragraphs, then you might want to include some subheadings to sort of show signposts to the reader um, what each paragraph will be about. We also have um, the author's name and the date that the article was written. So whenever you're writing an article, try to include all of these features. As well as including an appropriate range of organisational features that match up with the text type, this is a really cohesive text. So all of the sentences and ideas are linked up together and everything flows in a really effective way. So for example, we have the first paragraph explaining um, what this person did, the work that they did last week. And then we have what happened after they did this. So we've got these um, temporal markers that show when they did things. And we've got everything sort of in a chronological order. So everything, um, has been written in the order that it happened. This makes it really cohesive and makes the answer make sense and flow logically. And then we've got the second paragraph explaining what happened after they started the painting. And then finally um, explains what happened at the end when they hung the painting up, um, when they finished it. So a really logical order with all the paragraphs flowing on from each other in a way that makes sense. We also have some great connectives that have been used in the answer to link up some ideas within sentences. So for example, we've got um, the connective but here um, to create sort of a, a contrast. So we've got, it was not my best work, but it was still satisfying to see the fruits of my labor. We also have an and here to add some additional information to the sentences. 
So they have been sitting alone and they've been painting. So try to add connective words in your own answer and try to make sure that you are writing in a really logical way with each paragraph flowing on from the previous one. Now let's consider the language and register that have been used in the answer. So we know that we need to have the right tone and style to match up with the reader, uh, the audience of the text and the purpose of the text as well. This answer is really well suited to the purpose of the text because we've been asked to identify a time when we were involved in doing some work and they've um, identified a type of work. They've decided to focus on creative work, which was one of the options given in the question. So it's really well suited to the purpose and it fulfills all of the questions that were asked in the task. It's also suited to the audience. So it's been written for a regular world of work column. So we're writing for a general audience of people who are interested in learning about work. And it's talked about the work quite positively. So we've got a positive tone used throughout to describe an experience that this person has enjoyed. Now you could choose to write about a more negative experience instead. Um, you can get quite creative with this and come up with your own ideas. We also need to consider whether our answer needs to be formal or informal. So because we have been asked to write an article um, specifically for a column. Column articles um, tend to be quite personal and slightly informal. So you just need to familiarise yourself with different types of articles. So if you're writing a newspaper article, it would need to be quite formal, whereas a magazine or a column could be less formal. So let's have a look at some of the informal features that have been used here. So we've got the personal pronoun I that have been has been used throughout the text um, to make the text feel a lot more personal and to describe personal experiences. And then we've got relatively informal language. So for example, the phrase sat myself down with a cup of tea. This is the kind of thing that you might say to a friend or someone that you, you know quite well. So it makes the text feel more personal and draws the reader into the description. So just make sure that you're really carefully looking out for the audience and purpose that have been specified in the question and you are really adapting your answer to fit the audience and purpose. Finally, we have some longer sentences that show that this person can make connections between multiple ideas and pieces of information. So for example, we have with an audiobook playing in the background so that's one piece of information they've got an audiobook on. I spent hour upon hour with a paintbrush in my hand. So they've been painting for several hours. Letting the colour spill onto the canvas. So they are um, looking at the, the colours and sort of getting creative. And turning my imagined ideas into con a concrete image. So lots of different parts of the sentence there joined up with commas and connectives to connect different ideas together. So try to write some longer sentences in your answers, but make sure that when you're doing this, um, you don't make your sentences so long that they start to become confusing um, because you need to make sure that your answers are very clear and that everything makes sense. So overall, we've seen that this is a really great answer. It effectively answers the question by addressing each point each question that has been asked in the task. The answer makes sense and everything flows really effectively. We've got great spelling, punctuation and grammar that help the answer to make sense to the reader, make it really easy to read. We've used the correct formatting for an article and paragraphs have been used effectively with each paragraph following on from the previous one in a logical order. The writing is also very appropriate for the audience and purpose that was specified in the question. So overall, it's a terrific response and you should try to replicate this in your own answers. Have a go at writing your own response to this question and then check it through to make sure that your spelling, punctuation and grammar are accurate and to make sure that the writing is really clear. 
Also ensure that you are using the correct formatting features and you haven't forgotten to include paragraphs or made any mistakes in your sentences.